So let us start. Welcome to this special edition of a seminar about rearrangement reactions. First, let us have a look for tautomeries, for different tautomeries which are in fact very similar. Of course, the tautomery is a one three proton shift and the most renowned example is the keto enol tautomery. The ketone in equilibrium with an enol. If we exchange the oxygen against a nitrogen, then we have an enine, enamine tautomery. If instead we exchange this carbon here against a nitrogen, then we get to a nitroso oxime tautomery. And if we exchange within the imine enamine tautomery this carbon against an oxygen and add some substituent here, then, as you see, we have this example of an imidic acid, carboxylic acid amide tautomery. I hope you've noticed that it makes sense to draw these tautomeries exactly in the same orientation, then you can keep in mind that, uh, well, there are some differences, but essentially from mechanism, it is all the same. And it is therefore easy to learn. And, well, and you will notice that uh, also other types of rearrangements uh, uh, can be analyzed just as we did for the tautomeries. Let's have a look at three, three sigmatropic shifts. You know, certainly you know the COPE rearrangement. In this case, you have an hexadiene system that at elevated temperatures will rearrange Again, a hexadiene system, but now with more substituents at the olefins. More substituents at the olefins means uh, more stability, so the equilibrium will be on this side of the reaction. The COPE rearrangement typically, typically takes place at uh, 180 degrees. If we exchange a carbon against an oxygen for such a vinyl allyl ether, then the result will be an gamma delta unsaturated carbonyl compound. This is called a Claisen rearrangement, or you can also call it an oxa-cope rearrangement, and it takes place a little bit at uh, moderate temperatures above 100 degrees. We can also observe this kind of reaction with aromatically annihilated uh, um, <coughs> systems. So, an aromatic Claisen rearrangement takes place at, again, higher temperature above 160 degrees because, well, you have an de-aromatization step and this affords more energy, this needs more energy, and uh, uh, of course, then as a very fast reaction, an keto 
ketoenol tautomery will finally lead to this phenol with the allyl group in the ortho position. So, here we have additional examples. Again, the COPE system, this time with an alcoholate here in uh, allyl position. This is called an oxycope rearrangement, forming an enolate in the first step. And after protonation, we end up with a delta epsilon unsaturated carbonyl compound. This is more electron rich than the COPE rearrangement, and therefore it is observed that it takes place already at 70 degrees. Also very electron rich, even more electron rich, is this example that reminds us of the Claisen rearrangement, but with the yeah, additional oxide here. So this is, of course, the ester enolate of an allyl ester of acetic acid. So the rearrangement can take place here also, and it does, in fact, already at very low temperatures, minus 78 degrees, and it's called an ireland claisen rearrangement, a rather modern and uh, synthetically precious reaction. As a final example of 3-3 sigma tropic shifts, we have this strange system here. Well, actually, you could call that an aromatic annihilated diazer cope rearrangement. So, how do you synthesize such a molecule? Very easy. You just take phenyl hydrazine and make a condensation reaction with cyclohexanone, having first the imine and the imine-enamine tautomery will give us this structure. At about 140 degrees, a rearrangement can take place, again, under de-aromatization, Imine-enamine tautomery will lead us back to the aromatic system. And, well, it's then an aniline which will condensate with the imine. And finally, you end up with this structure. It is an annihilated indole. And what we have here is the fissure indole synthesis. So the diazer cope rearrangement is the key step within the indole, Fischer indole synthesis. A third type of rearrangement reactions which we will discuss today are the one two rearrangements. Wagner-Mehrwein rearrangement is uh, the best known of those rearrangements. So, having an alcohol like this protonated and, well, heating it up a little bit, a rearrangement will take place. This methyl group will migrate while at the same time via a transition state 
the water molecule will, will leave. So giving rise to this tertiary carbocation. Finally, it will be deprotonated here and we end up with this olefin. So a typical wagner merwein rearrangement. If you have the alcohol at a secondary position, then a somewhat more stabilized secondary carbocation will be an intermediate and then the methyl group will migrate. It's, the, it's again the same process as before, a tertiary carbocation is formed and after elimination of uh, the proton, you end up with the olefin. Again, a wagner merwein rearrangement, but this time starting with a secondary alcohol. Very similar is the pinacol pinacolone rearrangement. So protonating of one of the alcohol functionalities, water will eliminate. Here we have a tertiary carbocation, but after the methyl group has migrated, we have an even more mesomerically stabilized, uh, stabilized cation. After deprotonation, we end up at the methyl tertiary butyl ketone. Pinacol, pinacolone rearrangement. Now please compare this situation with the wagner merwein rearrangement and the pinacol, pinacolone rearrangement. Here we have as a leaving group nitrogen. If nitrogen leaves, then this alkyl group from the cyclohexane moiety will migrate while the carbonyl is formed. We end up with this cycloheptanone as the final product. We have a ring enlargement reaction from the six-membered ring to the seven-membered ring. On, and you should know this type of rearrangement as the Tiffano rearrangement. Introducing hetero atoms per oxo moieties. This structure is the result of the addition of uh, a pair acid to a ketone. This hemiacetal can rearrange and fragmentate. Well, while the labile oxygen-oxygen bond is breaking, this oxygen is trapping the proton. The carbonyl group is formed here, while this alkyl group is migrating to this oxygen. Then, we get to this situation where we have, as the final products, this ester and the carboxylic acid. The overall result is that the initial pair acid has transferred its oxygen to the ketone the ketone is oxidized to the uh, carboxylic acid ester. Imagine having, for instance, a cyclohexane moiety here, a six-membered ring, then you would end up with a seven-membered ring here with an oxygen included, which 
here, which reminds us, of course, of the Tiffano reaction we have discussed before. Without this proton here, this, is, this molecule is called the cumul hydroperoxide. If you protonate it, then you have the water leaving group, migration of the phenyl group will lead to this stabilized carbocation and water. A subsequent hydrolysis will lead to acetone and phenol. This is indeed an industrial process and it's called the Hock phenol synthesis. With an even more electron rich system, this borate with the hydroperoxide group here, then you don't need to protonate the OH group for having a leaving group. The hydroxide can leave the molecule the same time, so over a transition state, this alkyl group is migrating. So, and we get an uh, <coughs> boron alcoholate, and after hydrolysis, we yeah, have, of course, an alcohol and the boronic acid. You know this process from the combination of hydroboration and subsequent oxidation as a very valuable tool for the synthesis of certain alcohols. Last example of those one, two shifts the oxime of cyclohexanone under acidic conditions in equilibrium, the oxygen can be protonated, forming again a um, water leaving group. Water leaves the molecule while this alkyl group is migrating, forming a seven-membered ring with this rather strange carbocation. And, uh, well, the nucleophilic water is trapping it. We get to this situation. It is an oxygen, a strange oxygen protonated emetic acid, deprotonating here, protonating there, and deprotonating here again will lead to a carboxylic acid amide, a cyclic one, it's a lactame, it's called in this case the caprolactame, and this is a very valuable product of an important industrial process the Beckmann rearrangement. So, I hope you have uh, seen that uh, learning these lots of rearrangement reactions, most of them indeed name reactions, is important and it's made easy if you learn it by comparing and uh, figuring out what is the common scheme of all these uh, reactions. Um, we have uh, discussed three types of rearrangement uh, reactions and, uh, well, finally, thanks for listening.